Chapter 15 The Trees Have Eyes The late summer skies had turned into a dreary gray as a light rain began to fall across the trail ahead. The dense woods and tall trees in every direction only served to add to the overall melancholic mood of the place. Caleb looked down at his sandaled feet, and he could see the degraded rubble of what once a major roadway was beaconing him forward in the ever-darkening gloom. Caleb stopped and turned in every direction to get a bearing on his location. He then reached into his pocket. It's not there, he realized. I gave it to Stephen. Oh, what was I thinking? He continued. He walked along for what seemed an eternity, the sound of the raindrops, cascading gently down the branches of the tall trees and making a shimmering sound, not unlike a multitude of crickets on a humid summer's eve. Not overbearing, but almost hypnotic in its consistency. Caleb realized he was having another one of his dreams, but he continued onward and was determined to play this one out for whatever lessons he might learn from it. He stopped and turned around, feeling someone's presence behind him. Not following him, mind you, but merely waiting for Caleb's conscious effort to acknowledge his presence. When Caleb turned around, he saw an old man standing in front of him. Do I know you? he asked. Do you not recognize who I am? asked the old man, standing with him in the rain. Should I? Look at me closer, Caleb, he said, and you may see something familiar in my eyes. Caleb started to step closer, but something made him change his mind. Caleb stopped, blinked his eyes, and carefully wiped off the excess rain that was running slowly down his forehead and onto his face. In between the drops of rain, he finally caught a glimpse of the face. Could it be? He thought, creeping in closer to get a better look. It looks almost like. Strange sensation, isn't it, young Caleb, said the deep booming voice to old Caleb as the young Caleb reached out and touched the face before him. Young Caleb stepped back suddenly, continuing to stare at his older self. The old Caleb looked to the young Caleb to be nearly as old, if not older than Elder Zachariah himself. He was somewhat taller than the younger Caleb, but his face was, well, aged. Old Caleb still had the same long wavy hair, but it was no longer deep brown, but had gray and silver mixed in, but the eyes were the same, as Caleb stared at old Caleb for several silent, ponderous moments. Where are we? the young Caleb asked. Where and when, you mean, emphasized the old Caleb. Whatever you say, he answered. Oh, don't give up so soon. You are now just beginning to learn to control your gift, Caleb. You mustn't relinquish your abilities too soon and so quickly. In time, you will learn to control your gift, assured the old Caleb, looking somewhat amused at the befuddlement of his young counterpart. You don't seem to understand. We are the same, Caleb. This gift that you've been given traverses time and space, and you will learn that better as you get older. I'm merely a reflection of your own conscience, created within your own mind and within your own time. I see. So, can you tell me then, what's going to happen in the future? Caleb asked. I can only tell you the things that you want to know. The old Caleb paused and thought, there are some things, some pains that are perhaps, better off unknown. We may not always be together like this. I can tell you this, there is more that will come after, than has come before, said the old Caleb, hesitating as if in great pain. Are you okay? I'm fine. There is one thing I want to tell you. It's important. You must always guard Martha. She is your rock, said the old Caleb, again wrenching as if in pain. Young Caleb swallowed hard, feeling somewhat queasy, like someone who had just spun around on a rope swing too many times. There was some connection between the two of them that neither one of them understood. He collected his thoughts and continued, looking around at their surroundings. So, where is this place and why am I here? He stared, questioning the old Caleb, watching a smile form on his face as the young Caleb began to realize the answer. Young Caleb looked around. Father and Stephen are here in these woods, aren't they? He asked. Yes. Young Caleb turned and looked around. The rain had stopped, exactly when Caleb wasn't sure, but his location had suddenly changed. They were standing near an old, decayed bridge, straddling a small creek. There was a dull round metal sign posted on the side of the road near the bridge. 
He strained his eyes to read the old sign as best he could, Aiden Road, State Route 646, he slowly read. Very good, look over there, instructed the old Caleb. Caleb shifted his gaze in the direction the old Caleb pointed, and he saw a line of tall pine trees, marking a distinctive boundary in the forest line, and all the trees had something etched into their trunks. He ran to the closest to get a better look. It was a symbol of some sort, but he couldn't quite make out its meaning. He looked again. It almost looked like an. It's a symbol of the watching eye, Caleb. You see, the tree watchers are watching you, said old Caleb. Okay, but who are these watchers? They're the ones who live in the trees, observe, suggested the old Caleb, pointing out into the trees all around them in the woods. Caleb spun around, the old, decayed road had returned again, as well as the dense woods. Caleb looked out into the trees and strained his eyes to see the separate shadowy figures, each seeming to blend in with the trees. Sure enough, there were people here, mingled in carefully with these woods, and it seemed as if each of these people were a natural part of this forest. Although Caleb could sense no malevolence from them, this was their home and visitors were not welcomed, that was clearly understood. One of the watchers, apparently the leader, suddenly flew up and across the tops of the trees as if he was strung along on some silky spidery web. Caleb could see his face as he passed by. His face, arms, and chest, all painted up in an odd assortment of colors, green, black, yellow, and brown shades. Wait, he'd seen this before, but in a different time and place. Once again, Caleb felt a wave of nausea come over him. These people, I had a vision of them before. Caleb mumbled to himself, suddenly afraid he'd been noticed, but relieved that apparently he wasn't. Caleb could hear the distinctive clip-clop of hooves on the old road as they approached in the distance. Young Caleb and old Caleb stood side by side as they watched a group of eleven men on horseback approaching on the roadway. Father, Stephen, it's me, Caleb, yelled the young Caleb, hoping desperately to get his brother's attention. It's no use, Caleb, they can't hear you. Observe and learn, instructed the old Caleb. What Caleb saw next horrified him, as no vision of his had yet to do. He saw one of the young tree watchers silently poised on a large branch, high up in his tree, reach behind his back and pull out an arrow from an unseen quill on his back and take aim. Several other tree watchers swiftly and silently followed suit from up high in their trees. Caleb carefully followed the young archer's line of sight, following it down from the tree until it reached. No father, look out, he shouted. Then Caleb awoke. Caleb, you okay? Asked a familiar voice, waking Caleb from his dream. It was Martha. Caleb, who was looking somewhat startled, sat up, shaking his head, and looked around. He and Martha were sitting in the grass, outside of the Richton's new pottery barn, leaning his back up against a tree. He looked at Martha, who had a puzzled look on her face. What just happened? he asked. Martha froze a second, uncertain of what to say. Well, we were just taking a break from Miss Richton's pottery lesson, and you decided to come outside with me and have some tea. Did I just pass out or something? No. But we were talking about the expedition and your father and my father, and then suddenly you dozed off for a few seconds, explained Martha, suddenly looking worried. Are you all right? she asked. I had a vision again, mumbled Caleb. What? But you only dozed off for a second or two. How were you able to have a... Caleb cut her off with a wave of his hand. It's hard to explain, but to me it seemed like a lot longer than a few seconds, he said. Don't worry, it happens a lot, I just don't tell people about them. Martha changed places in the grass, sitting across from Caleb and began sipping her tea. So, tell me about this dream, she insisted. What was it like? Caleb tried his best to explain the vision he had to Martha, being careful to leave out certain details he didn't want to needlessly worry her about. So, what did he look like, she asked. Caleb looked perplexed. What did who look like? What did old Caleb look like? He looked like me, but older. You're joking, right? Martha continued staring at Caleb. The old Caleb was as tall as me, and his hair was like mine, except it had gray and silver in it. Come to think of it, he, 
or I looked a lot like Elder Zachariah, said Caleb. Martha smiled at Caleb, and then she started giggling. I knew it. You think I'm crazy. Not at all, Caleb. It's just that it's... She paused in the middle of her thought. It's just that it's hard to believe, I know. Caleb stopped sipping his tea and lowered his gaze. Don't do that, Caleb, said Martha. Do what? Don't underestimate yourself. You have an extraordinary gift, Martha pressed on. I think that God wants you to use your gift for something good. Like when we were younger, do you remember? You mean, that time when the children in the camp nearly drowned in that sinkhole? No, not that time. Come on, Caleb, tell me you remember. He shook his head. Remember when I told you about my mother, when she was so sick, and how we were all worried that she might lose her baby, she asked. Caleb tried to remember, but he couldn't. You told me, and I'll never forget this, not to worry that my little brother would be just fine. Caleb's eyes widened. Oh yeah, now I remember. I saw the two of you in a dream. I saw you holding Nathan's hand on the way to Sabbath, said Caleb. I know, but my parents didn't even know they were going to have a little boy, not until after Nathan was born. Wow, I forgot about that. I even went and told my father what you said to me one night when he was worried about mother, said Martha. He gave me the strangest look and then he walked away. You put my heart at ease, Caleb. I never worried about my mother after that, and I knew that she would be just fine. So, see, Caleb, you have a gift. For a moment that seemed to cling to eternity, the two of them stared into each other's eyes. Caleb suddenly started to get nervous. And you, Caleb, are a gift to me, said Martha, who reached out, softly touching Caleb's hand. Just then, Caleb and Martha heard the front door of the pottery barn as Mrs. Richton stepped outside. Are you two ready to finish this project or not? she asked. We'll be right there, they echoed in unison, standing up from the spot where they had been sitting. Caleb watched Mrs. Richton, waiting until she had gone back inside the house. Caleb hesitated for a second. You'd better do it now, Caleb, or you might not get another chance for a while, he thought. Caleb reached out to Martha's shoulder, stopping her, and then he spun her around again. Yes, Caleb, what? asked Martha, stopping her sentence short as she could almost sense what Caleb was thinking, and anticipating it as she did, she reacted much quicker than Caleb and moved closer and kissed him, gently on the cheek. Then, as the two of them caught each other's eyes once more, Caleb kissed Martha this time, softly on her cheek. Thank you for believing in me, Caleb whispered to Martha. I will always believe in you, said Martha, who started to return to Richton's house, then stopped and turned around, but more importantly, you must always believe in yourself. You have been listening to Caleb Elgin, The Rise of the Clans, by David E. Farmer. Also available on Amazon Kindle. More chapters coming soon. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye.